I've got two good fraction games for you to play. Fraction Bingo and Fraction Spoons. I found these in great blogs which I found online and I'll put the links to, to the blogs underneath the video. So thank you to them for the resources. I'll explain how to play them now. I hope you enjoy. So this is the Fractions Bingo game, which is great fun. What you'll need is you'll need to print off this game board. Now, because it's a little different to normal bingo, you the, the people you're playing with, and you can play with as many people as you like, can just have this same board. So I've just given you this one grid um, because you're all going to be rolling a dice as well to generate your, your fractions. So you can all work with the same, the same sheet. So you need a sheet printed out and you need two dice or you could just have one um, and roll it twice. So on this grid there are lots of different circles which have been divided up into sections, into fractions. So up here in the top left this circle's been divided into sixths and then over here in the bottom corner this one's been divided into fifths. Top corner up here this one's quarters and then we've got some that are holes as well. Now what you need to do is you have your dice, I've got my computer dice on here, and you will roll either two dice or roll one twice. So let's do that now. Okay, so I got a six and a one. Now what you do is you always put the, the bigger number that you got on the dice at the bottom to be your denominator and the smaller number will be your numerator. So I've got a six and a one, so six is gonna be my denominator and one is going to be my numerator. So let's just come back to here for now. So that means I've got one sixth. Okay, that's my fraction one sixth. And you might want some paper just so you can write this down on the edge or the back or something, you might be able to remember. And then what you do is you have a look at your grid and oh, you also need something to colour in with or just, just a pen. And what you do is you will be looking for a shape that has been divided into sixths. OK, so any circle that has got six pieces. OK, so I know this top one up here has. And you're going to colour in the fraction that you've rolled. So one sixth. OK, so I'm going to colour in one sixth. OK, now this square is now done. OK, that one is, is ticked off. And if you want to, you could always cross through it or you could just leave it coloured in so that you know that that one's done. OK, and then you have another go and another go. Um, and everyone else who's playing will be will be having a go too. You could even all have a go at the same time and see who, who is the quickest to fill up their whole sheet or you can take it in turns. So let's have another roll. So roll. So I've got one and a five, so that's going to be one fifth this time. One fifth. You're looking for a shape where there is um, divided into fifths. Let's have a look. So I know there is one here. So I'm going to colour in one fifth. Okay. And then we keep going. I want to have one more go. I want to see if I can get one without a number one in it. Oh, there you go. I'll use this one. So I've got a two and a four. That's a good one to get, actually. Two and a four. So remember, the bigger number goes at the bottom as your denominator. OK, so I've got two quarters. Now let's have a look for a shape with quarters. OK, so I've got one down here. So I'm going to colour in two of the quarters. Now, as this game goes on, you might find that you start running out of shapes. So, so if you rolled, for example, a four and a four, let's look up here, I've got four quarters. Now, four quarters is, I could colour in all four of these quarters here. But actually, what is four quarters the same as? Four quarters is the same as a whole. And any, any fraction that's got the same number at the top and the bottom is the same as a whole. I have to look, excuse my funny colouring, it's quite hard on the computer. And so you could colour in any shapes which are actually just, just the whole ones instead. 
give you one more example. If you rolled two sixths, so you rolled a two and a six, but there weren't any more sixth circles that you could colour in. Remember with equivalent fractions, if you divide the top and the bottom or times the top and the bottom by the same number, you will end up with an equivalent fraction. Now, if I want to make this smaller, maybe try and end up with a one on the top, I need to divide the top by two. So two divided by two would be one. And then I'd need to divide the bottom by two. So six divided by two is three. So an equivalent fraction for two sixths is one third. So actually I could instead colour in a shape with thirds and colour in one of them. So there's different options here. You could not play the equivalent rule and just play what you've rolled. But if you'd like to extend it to add equivalent fractions so you can try and cover more of your um, more of your grid, then you can do that. You might want to write in the fractions as you go along next to the shape just to prove that that you know what you're you're colouring in. That would be good. So, for example, for this one, you might write down next to it one third. And for this one, you might write down four quarters to prove that that's that's why you decided to colour in a hole. The other thing you could do is instead of trying to fill up the whole grid, you could try and get five in a row, for example, and the first person to get five in a row. And then that will include a little bit of tactic and strategy because you might be thinking about which are the best circles to colour in and maybe using your equivalent fractions to try and make sure you can get your five in a row. So maybe the first person to get a whole row, either horizontally or vertically. So that's Fraction Bingo. It's a great game. I found it on School Time Snippets blog, which I'll put the link underneath the video. So thank you to them. Now I'm going to show you um, the game of spoons, which you might have played before, but this time it's a fraction game of spoons. So this is the game of spoons. Now you may have played this before. You play this with cards and you're trying to get four of a kind. <clears throat> and this is a very similar, um, it's, a, it's a, a, a variation of the game, but you're using fraction cards to match instead. So it's called spoons because you have spoons in the middle of the table. Now it doesn't have to be spoons. It could, it could be anything, but you have one spoon less than the number of players. Because the idea is, as you move around and you end up with four cards of a kind, so you've, you've matched your four cards, you have to grab a spoon. And you don't want to be left without a spoon at the end. Now, if one person takes a spoon, then anyone else can take a spoon, even if they haven't got their four of a kind. And you have to be really quick. And if you're left without, then you're the loser for that round. So I'll just show you this to demonstrate. So if there are five players, you would have four spoons in the middle. OK, make sure they're nice and easy to get to that in the middle of everybody and it's nice and fair. Now you have one dealer and they have got the cards. OK, and they give everybody at the beginning four cards each. OK, so you all have four cards. Now. The dealer has another pack. OK, so you've all got your four cards. OK, but then the dealer also has a pack of other cards there. OK. And they pick up one from the, the, the pack here and has a look at it and see if they want it. But then they have to get rid of one. They have to discard one because only, you're only allowed to have four cards at once. So he'll the dealer, whoever it is, will pick up another one and look at the five cards they've now got, and then we'll decide which one to, to, to get rid of. And then they will pass that card round this way. And then this player will pick up that card and have a look compared to the, the four cards they've got. They've now got five in their hand. They'll decide which ones they want to keep and which one they want to get rid of. And then they will pass the one they're getting rid of around the circle. And then this player will pick up whichever card this now is and have a look. They've now got five in their hand. They will keep four and then pass one away. Doesn't matter which one they choose to pass away. Now, obviously, you will want to make sure 
that you're trying to get four of a kind. Now, at the beginning of the game, it's really difficult because you don't know, you're, not, you're unlikely to have any kind of sets. So you often have to pick something to go for. So if you were doing this with normal cards, you might end up with, with cards of all different suits. So hearts and diamonds and, and clubs. And so you might need to just decide, right, I'm gonna go for hearts or I'm going to go for the number three. So sometimes you just have to make a choice and and sometimes it's annoying because then you end up having lots of cards come past you which you could have used but that's the, the fun of the game so then this player um has a look at this card along with their four that they've got and decides which card they're going to keep which cards they're going to keep and which one they're going to get rid of now when they get rid of the last player when they get rid of that card this card is now discarded and can just be left okay it can be left next to them or, or put further away because now they're out that one's out of play okay but the dealer will have have a, a big a big pack of cards that they will keep taking from here okay so they will have the leftover cards after each play it's got four cards each and they'll just keep taking from this pack it's quite hard to explain you might have played it before hopefully but it is a little bit hard to explain but actually on youtube if you just search for spoons card game there are quite a few videos of people trying to teach you how to play spoons or families playing spoons. So you could watch that and just get a general idea. So with this game, you are using fraction cards. So these are the cards that you will have. And you are trying to get four cards which are all equivalent to each other. So this is an equivalent fraction game. And there is a bit of a clue because actually there are, you will end up with a yellow, a blue, a red and a green card in order to have a set but obviously they do have to be equivalent so let's have a look and and see if we can just remind ourselves about how to find equivalent fractions so what i recommend you do is is the cards that i will send and i'll send this along in the email and um, i'll send this document and print it out okay there are i think four pages of cards here cut them all out and then what I recommend you do is before you even start thinking about playing spoons, unless you're feeling very confident with your equivalent fractions, I would cut them all up and just spend some time matching them up and, and working out which ones would be together in a little family anyway. And then once you've done that, once you're more familiar with, with, the, with the groupings, you can then shuffle them all up and play the game. So remember I said that the hint is that there's going to be a yellow, a blue, a green and a red in each pack. But obviously you do need to make sure they are all the same size and they are equivalent to each other. So if I start with one third, OK, it's always good to, to start with the fraction with the, the one at the top, because that's an easy place to kind of work from. So if I start with one third now, remember, if you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, you will end up with an equivalent fraction. You can do the same if you divide by the same number. So having a look at the fractions that we've got here, we're looking for a fraction that we could multiply these numbers by the same thing to get to one of these fractions. Now, the clue is, if you look at the denominators, if it is, if it might be, equivalent and it, it is not guaranteed but if it might be equivalent the denominator is definitely going to end up being in the three times table okay so if we have a look at the numbers here i can see that nine is in the three times table okay now the reason you have to be careful with with looking at it that way is that this is an equivalent fraction and i'll show you why in a minute but if you had a nine at the bottom, which is in the three times table, okay, three, six, nine, but if the numerator was a, a two, for example, that would not make it equivalent, okay, because you'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by different numbers to, to get there. So just be cautious of that, but that's a good way to kind of start spotting. So with this fraction, to get from three to nine, I can multiply by three and to get from one to three, I also multiply by three. OK, so this is an equivalent fraction. 
All right. Now we can also see, ooh, wobbly writing, we can see here the three and the nine. The three is in the three times table, the nine is in the three times table. And actually, if I look, because this is a third, okay, dividing into three pieces, if I look at the relationship here between the numerator and the denominator, if I times three by three, because we're doing thirds, I end up with nine. And that's another clue. If you're doing thirds, that if you multiply the denominator here by three, you should get to the numerator. So let's have a look at that with another one, this green one here. 18 is in the three times table, so is six. So this definitely looks like a possibility. Now, if I multiply six by three, what do I get? I get 18, so that's right. Okay, so that is another one that would go with that group. And where is the last one? Here it is, we've got our red one. So we've got, if we times four by three, because remember we're doing thirds, we get 12. So that is another equivalent fraction. And if we compare it to our third, if we times one by four, we'd get to four. And we times three by four, we'd also get to 12. So it's definitely equivalent. And then these ones also match up as well because they're my leftover ones here. So this time, just quickly looking at these, these are fifths we're looking at. So I'm gonna start with, with one fifth. And so all of these numerators and denominators Okay, well, the denominators here, you can see, are all in the five times table, 10, 15, 35, all in the five times table. The numerators won't necessarily be, but that doesn't mean it's not equivalent. Okay, if, if, if your denominator is, then it will definitely be a good start. But to check it, because we're doing fifths, you can either multiply between the fractions. So one times seven would be seven. This is why it's good to start with, with the fraction with the one because it's, it's easier to, to work from. So five times seven is 35. So that one definitely is equivalent. And because we're working in fifths, we can also see that actually seven times five is 35. Two times five is 10. Three times five is 15. So they're also all equal to a fifth. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, this game, and normally spoons can be a really fast game. Um, but this is obviously a little bit trickier. So you might want to have everyone starting with a yellow card. So the dealer could give out a yellow card to everybody and then just give them three other random cards, green, blue, red, and um, a mixture of whatever but if everyone starts with a yellow card that's the that's the the fraction equivalent that they'll be looking for they'll be looking for cards which match their yellow one so they'll be just looking for thirds and then it might help to focus focus the game a bit more and make it less tricky so maybe if you start with a yellow card and then you could know what you're looking for you're looking for fractions where if you multiply the numerator by by three if you're doing thirds you should end up with a denominator like we did here okay or, or, or with fifths if you multiply the numerator by five you should end up with a denominator so that's fraction spoons it's a great game remember i said that there are some videos on youtube of people just playing general spoons if you want to just have a look and see how the game works it's a little bit hard to explain over the computer um, and I will put the link to the blog post where I found this game underneath the video as well. So thank you to that, that blog post, post for providing the resources and the cards. And I will send these cards out to you via email. I hope you enjoy playing those games. They're great fun. And um, they might take a little bit of getting used to as you, as you learn more and more about fractions, but they're a really good way to practice. Enjoy.